Hey y'all, it's Poseidon, and I'm here with another episode of the Beside Cast coming at you live. Well, not live, actually, I'm recording this, so we're coming at you. Beside Cast episode number seven, and you know, we're on our way, dude. Um, glad I've been staying, uh, you know, sticking true to the podcast, recording one every week, like I said I would. Uh, feels good. So we're just going to continue. We've got some topics over here to the left where we talk about. There's been some discord about um, or discourse on like social media about um, do top players owe you games? Not necessarily owe you games, but why top players don't play with like everyone. They kind of only play with a select group of other top players. Um, we'll get into that. Talk about combo breaker just in general. I'll probably going to go over show um, the the bracket and stuff like that. Or like top 48. Just talk over some potential matchups, stuff like that. Um, in a previous video, I uploaded the one before this one i talked about my own personal thing about combo breaker that's not going to be what i do here so if you want to hear about how i'm feeling personally about it you can go and uh look at that previous video i'm gonna talk about just tournament mentality in general because i have a lot of tournaments coming up or i had one last weekend i had one this weekend and a couple more coming up so i'm gonna be talking over tournament mentality and then i'm gonna be talking something that i personally have brought up before about how the mk community runs team battles and i think it's um not correct and essentially and we'll get into that when we get there um but first we're talking about should top players give games to everyone and i think you know that's kind of up to them like some people will um do that like i know like people like Gur, for example top player insanely good and just as two pro comp qualifier will give games to like everyone especially when he's streaming he'll just like yeah let's you know, let's run games. He doesn't really like differentiate. But then there's some people that will be like, oh, be like, oh, if you want to play me on while I'm streaming, you need to sub to my channel. And there's some people who just outright won't just like give games because they want you know to have quality matches with the people that they're playing. And um, I think something that's like pretty big, um, in the community, like I, I don't want to say a big problem, but something that like top players, it's because like we like I have to use the word top players because there really is no way to differentiate who's a pro player from like a top player like maybe sonic fox and ninja killer could be considered pros but like outside of those two maybe scorpion prox and nicholas but outside of those it's like no one else could really be considered a pro like Waz, i think does this full time but he has like really big youtube following and social media following um and then you have like other players who definitely either work full-time or are full-time students so it's like you have to use the phrase top players there isn't really anything that separates you know like a pro player or a top player from the other people in terms of what they're allowed to do or what they're allowed to have there isn't like any specific leads like yeah there's final combat but they still have to qualify and they there's not anything particular that they're allowed to do that helps them qualify that other people aren't allowed to do and it's like equal opportunity but the like equivalent it is like imagine like you're trying to become a professional quarterback or you're like you're in high school and you're like hey justin jefferson more probably the best wide receiver in the league can i throw balls to you can, can we practice football you know what i mean like it, like the odds that you could even get in touch with justin jefferson and have some sort of way to like contact him is unlikely or maybe maybe you reach out on social media but you probably won't answer because he's probably not incredibly active on it but you get my point there's, there's nothing there's a, there's no real like barrier between them which i feel like is fine but then you have to understand that when people say no you can't take that personally you can't get upset because they 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 you know they're people's time is precious like i i'm busy you know what i mean i can only imagine what you know the pro players because if they're making content and trying to train for tournaments and for someone like sonic fox you're playing for training for multiple games at the tournaments so it's like the the time that you have is valuable and the time that you have to Im you improve is limited so i you know it, i think it would be cool if they did play i just completely understand why they don't you know, like I, I think I would give game. I give games to everyone, anyone that comes by my stream. I'll run some games with them, even if I feel like I'm way better than them, and I'm just beating them game after game. We went 10, 15 games, or also give them games. But I feel like that helps, and I feel like the metric that I have always looked at is like if you play people you're better than, then that helps you know refine your punish game and refine your neutral. If you play someone who's equal to your level, and that kind of pushes you to kind of like adapt on the fly and improve your adaptation skills. And then when you play people that are are better than you. Did I say that? Worse than you, as good as you, better than you. We place people better than you, then they're going to expose your bad habits. They're going to expose the things that you're doing that just aren't really safe, that other people may not be exposing, or just like gaps, or showing that, hey, you're doing this too often. So I think playing all three is good. But like, I, I have noticed that when I play like super top players, like, uh, for example, um, Jay Mook, who's one of the best super transport players in the world was ranked number three in melee um when i would play with them like after like just a session of like an hour hour and a half 
I would like feel better. I would like understand like, okay, I'm actually like better at this game. So it, like when you are able to play like those players, it is quite valuable, even if you're just getting bodied. Sometimes you get so bodied though, and it's like, it's not even worth it. Um, like if you're just outright, like the people that don't understand frame data, they're just doing crazy things and like, you're, you're really not learning anything. Like maybe you are refining, refining your punish game, but like, it's like the, the, amount, the, the time could be spent better elsewhere. And, you know, as long as you're getting better, like if you're playing the game actively, you're playing a lot, you're labbing and you're improving, then you'll get better and you will start to get people who want to give you games. Like, and I, I think also a big thing that comes with that is like, go to your offlines or your locals, because you'll never go to an offline. I've never, actually, I think I've only experienced it once in like years of going to offlines and I've been to a bunch that like people just like will say no to giving you games unless they're like busy you know what i mean like if they're at a setup with someone else and like yeah we're, i'm playing them but like you know i'm in the same region as people like ludi sunio kerbo and i started mk11 and they were all really good at the beginning of mk11 so it's like they all already had a lot of experience and i was bad and they were still willing to give me advice help me out run games um so like if you go to like offlines and you see these people there, there 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 are a lot of people that will help you that are better and that are, will give you games. So you know just trying to reach out to you know these super top players who have you know their time is very valuable. They may not get back to you or they may just say no because it's not worth it. And you know online they're more likely to do that than like an offline or at least uh, like a local. Like maybe at a major you see Sonic Fox sitting down and set up and you ask for games they may say no. But that is what it is, and that's kind of my opinion on it. I don't think they owe anyone games. I think it's cool when they do. Um, and I've heard people say, and I probably would be the same way if I ever reached the tippy top level, which I haven't. So maybe my opinion will change if I do. But if I ever do that, I probably will still give everyone games. But I'll probably won't be so open about when I'm on. So I'll be like, anyone, anytime you want games, just let me know. Um, you know, what I mean, I'll probably still play. I'll play like other really good players. But you get what I'm saying. So who knows, my opinion will change. So the, the, the second topic we have is Combo Breaker. Combo Breaker is coming up this weekend and is going to be the most stacked tournament probably for Mortal Kombat 1 to date. The second biggest in terms of entrances from the release of Mortal Kombat 1 and the biggest in 2020, 2024? 2024, yeah, that's, that's the year we're in. So, so we got players like Sonic Fox, Ninja Killer, Scorpion Prox, Nicolas, Bandinos, Euphoring, uh, Mari, um let's just go over let me, let me let me pull up let me uh get rid of these topics let me pull up the uh internet tab and i'll pull up uh players like wraith and stuff like that let me pull this up real quick um with the internet tab so these are the players that we have uh that will be in attendance so i just kind of went to top 24 um i'm actually yesterday i was reporting a um a prediction video with joystick and it was just taking forever to get through each pool so trying to break it down by each pool so i'm just gonna break it down by who's a top 48. fortunately i'm not personally projected to make top 48 but see me there see me there i, I plan to make top 48. <laughs> so we got uh people like euphoria euphoria is in a bandinos pool so this could be bandinos euphoria versus scorpion prox rewind video games yo you know a ninja killer i heard foxy isn't going so let me check who's in foxy's pool we gotta see well, so who's gonna make it out of foxy pool it'll probably be wraith we have Wraith, you have Epic, you have Zesquil. So you got some big names. J-Chan. But I think it's probably going to be Wraith. So Wraith will probably be where Foxy is. He's going to fight Ninja, Killer, Janok. Oh, I think he's in Kokoi's pool, so Kokoi could be there. Dexy Dog has been crushing it. Um, I think this is like... No, no he's been off. I'm not talking about him. Maybe not for MK1, though. I know I saw him at Evo, though. But yeah, so this is what it is. Um, these pools. I'll go to the other pool. We can kind of look at who's expected to make it this far. Um, and these pools and stuff. Violets is from my pool. Damn, Violets is directed to be Mari. That's crazy. Mari is someone who can make a really big run. Wraith, someone who can make a really big run. Sparks, someone I feel like can make a really big run. Kokoi, I feel like it's going to come out in winners. Um, Ludi, you know, like there's, there's a lot of big names. So it, it's going to be cool to see how this tournament this weekend shapes up. Um, and yeah, yeah so we got a yeah, gambler um, in this pool versus Pulse. That will be a great set. They. Traded set or did Pulse? I think Pulse beat no Pulse beat him at uh, level up expo a few weeks ago, and then Gambler ended up losing to Han and who Han Rashid who went on to win the tournament. Gur versus Nicholas that'll be crazy. I think Nicholas Mike Glow. I think he's seated a bit high, but he's, he's a good player versus Sonic. Uh, Was uh, unjust. That would be a great set. Pure is someone who could I think come out in winners. I think Pure is in this pool, right? No, no, no. Pools were Was. I think Pure can beat Was. 
dialogue could be Sonic, honestly. Uh, no spoilers, but um, damn. Joystick's projected to be Dialog. That's a bit crazy after Dialog just won Texas Showdown, but both insanely good players. That should be good. Uh, G, Perfect Legend. I uh, haven't seen him play the game too much. I'm sure he's really good. Alex is nasty. He did to make it out of pools. Nice. Um, DJT, Legend, the community. Lankiness uh, made a top eight in Pro Comp. Um, okay, so let's go to top 24. And I'm gonna go because so there's just these are some projected matchups that are gonna be absolutely crazy. Video games you know, has Mari in his pool, so this this could be Mari here, that would be crazy. Uh Scorpion Pro. So the the inevitable top eight are uh, not inevitable. Uh, I don't wanna say that was that's not the right words. The uh predicted top eight, the top eight that's likely that there would have to be a major upset for it not to be is going to be Scorpion Prox fighting uh Ninja Killer and Nicholas fighting Sonic Box. And I feel like, I mean, I think if Unjust beat Sonic, that would be like, whoa! Especially because Unjust has been absolutely grinding the game. Um, but I digress. Um, and then we got um, Waz Mandino. I think Mandino's could win that. Violet, Violet's is projected to make top 24. Good for him. That should be a good, um, like, well, I think Violet's would win that. Uh, Gerwraith. I think Wraith, I think Wraith could win that. I think that Shang could be a hard matchup for Garrus. Um, Pulse and Ludi, that would be great if that happened. Dexy and Lanky, I think Dexy would win that. Foxy Fox not going to be there, so let's see if G is there. Rewind and Joystick. I don't know, I mean, I, have to, I might have to fight Rewind, so Rewind might be the uh, losers a little earlier than that, but who knows, who knows. Boring Pure, I think Pure. Um, and I think Top 8 will obviously be those four. Um, but yeah, and then let's, let's just take a look at the projected Top 8. And okay, so we got you know, Sonic, Scorpion Fox, and Scorpion Fox is the one seed. Sonic Fox is the two. Those are projected to play each other. Nicolas, so Scorpion Fox and Nicolas. Nicolas um, at the uh, Brazilian Pro Comp and lost to MK Javier. And Javier is probably a potential top 10 player already solidified in the Pro Comp finale. And the thing is, what's so big about this weekend is that there's going to be players punching their ticket to final combat, and there's going to be some people who are going to have to go to last chance qualifier and win last chance qualifier to make it uh killer genoc and gambler are two of those people that are very uh that need points this weekend same thing with waz um and let's say i mean ninja ninja i mean he's kind of maybe already solidified getting some extra points probably wouldn't hurt uh sonic fox as well as probably in with probably with points already but getting more points wouldn't hurt video games you already in qualified um gambler yes that's someone who need, really needs points so <clears throat> we'll see how this weekend turns out. It should be really cool. Uh, let me just... Oh, uh, yeah, no, that should be really cool. Um, I'll put in the description of this video where you can watch the tournament when it's going to start. Pretty sure it starts at 12 uh, CST and goes all the way to uh, 11 p.m. EST because uh, it's literally going to go from pool, Wave 1 pools to Top 24. It's all going to happen on Friday. So it's going to be a ton of action. It's going to be crazy. So definitely you're going to want to tune in. So I'll make sure to get the, where to watch the video and um, times and stuff like that in the description. And where you can watch Top 24 and Top 8. Because Top 24 through all the way through Top 8 and Grands is going to be on Saturday. So yeah, that is that. Let me cut that and bring my webcam back up. Boom, and then we'll get the topics back up here as well. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to go and talk about is going to be tournament mentality. And I, I, I think it, it, there's just a night and day feeling of playing in tournament versus playing in like a ranked match or playing friendlies. And a lot of people like to equivalent them and, and make them equivalent essentially like, oh, if I beat you at any point, then I'm like better than you. And that's okay. Um, you know, people are allowed to think whatever they want to. Um, for me personally, like everything that I do playing the game is trying to prep me for a term. I'm like, yeah, I'll have fun. Um, but like, I'm always trying to, you know, like these, these friendly matches, labbing and stuff like that. It's all in preparation to try to do my absolute best at tournaments and uh, just staying in a positive headspace and, you know, doing things like, you know, eating clean or maybe working out before. Um, or just working out in general are all things that can help you perform better in tournaments and there's things that you might not think about things like potentially meditation um, and just you know staying calm staying cool staying collected not getting frazzled not getting upset um, not letting your mind wander and that's something that I personally struggle with is that like sometimes during like tournament sets I'll let my mind just kind of go crazy um, I'll start getting like upset I'll start being like wow you know here it goes again and that's something that I personally want to work on um, but like I, I think 
when it comes to tournament mentality, you just kind of have to treat it differently. Um, you have to be able, you know, take deep breaths, you know, stay composed, play a little bit more patient than you normally would. Because, like, if you consider, like, when you play someone in combat, like, there's literally, like, there's no risk. You know what I mean? Like, if you lose, then, you know what I mean? You just cue the next match. And that's why you see, like, some people say, play some pretty crazy styles. You'll see people, you know, they'll wake up buttons a lot or they'll... They'll armor, like take make risky armor choices, or they'll they'll just do kind of crazy things that aren't the best things, or they'll mash because it's like what happens if you lose? Like nothing. So it's like it, it's it's the the mentality of playing a tournament is just completely different than playing in like rank matches and stuff like that. And if, at least for me personally, uh, trying to detach yourself from any sort of like like results outside of tournament like i mean even attaching yourself to tournament results being like oh my god i need this can be bad but just knowing that it's like completely night and day and it's like it's any given sunday you know or any given sunday that's a, a football phrase and that it goes to show like any given sunday any football team can lose to any other football team and um it's kind of true it's like any given tournament like any given tournament you know someone could be playing bad someone could be in a bad headspace someone could have you know drank the night before and be hung over you know what i mean like it's just you never really know and, and nerves are going to be present and it's trying to like being okay and being like okay i'm going to allow myself to be nervous and like also understanding that when you're nervous being nervous is also just like excitement you know, because you're excited to be in that moment. You're, if you weren't excited, if you weren't happy to be there, you wouldn't be nervous. Like, if you just dreaded it and you're just like, like, I'm just competing again. Huh? Like, you, you wouldn't feel nervous. It's because you're excited. It's because it's something you want and something you desire. It's because you're happy to be there. So kind of understanding that and being like, okay, I'm, I'm just excited. You know what I mean? Nervousness is excitement. And trying to understand that and drive that home to your own mentality, whether that's, you know, before tournament, during tournament. You know, while you're at the venue, while you're prepping, just like, you know, ner like nervousness is just excitement. So I hope that makes sense. I wasn't going to go too long on that, but um, I hope that, that makes sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. You know, tournament mentality. I, I have looked into it and studied it a lot. So it's something I personally uh, believe in a lot. And like I said, like, it's just, you know, just trying to stay cool, calm, and collected. And I think that's the biggest thing is playing patient and just being cool. Whatever happens, you make a mistake, let it go. You feel like you're not playing as well, let it go. You know what I mean? No no previous match affects the next match. So if you lose round one winners, that does not affect your round one losers match. You know what I mean? Just 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 keep going, stay alive in the tournament. And, you know, just know, know that no the previous interaction doesn't matter. The previous match doesn't matter. Only focus on what you have in front of you and just one match at a time. Okay. <laughs> so so the last thing I'm gonna talk about, um, is how the MK community runs team battle. So recently Prince Panther ran a team battle. I'm not calling them out particularly, but this is just the most recent thing. And um, well, a lot of people were saying like, oh, Connie Mani carried us. Connie Mani uh, carried, you know, the EU team. And the problem with team battles and what team battles are supposed to be is the team that has the best overall, you know, team, like the, the average of the team wins it's not like but the way the mk community does it is like every match is a fresh first to three so you play a first to three if you win you stay in if you lose you're eliminated and then the you know you go to the back of the line and then when the next person comes up when that person who won the previous match even it was three two they go up and it's just a fresh first to three again and the problem with that is that it doesn't show which team overall is the best it shows which team has the singular best player and that's a problem when it comes to a team battle if you're going to phrase it like that because it's the equivalent of, let's say, you know, they're, you're, they're basketball. Let's say in the NBA, you know, you play five on five and you have a bench and stuff like that. Well, let's say, um, instead of doing like playing five people on the court, it was the way they determined NBA games was they would just have everyone play one-on-ones. So you would play one-on-one. -on -one. If you won the one-on-one, -on -one, then you stay in. If you lost the one-on-one, -on -one, you were eliminated. And they just did that until there was one team was fully eliminated, then the other team won. That's basically how the crew battles in the MK community or the NRS community are ran. Um, and it, like the thing is, like in MK, you can't throw all five people out there at the same time. You know what I mean? You can only do one at a time. So the, the way you combat it and really make it a full overall team effort to get the W is make it lives based instead of you know, if you win, you stay in. If you lose, you're gone, base. And lives base, essentially, the way you start is you have one person going first. You have two people going first. They're blind. They don't know if you just send them each against each other. And they run, you know, first to three. And let's say it's three to two. 
So the person who lost three is eliminated, and the person who lost two only needs to lose one more game to be eliminated. And they stay in, that one person, and the next person goes in. And um, then, you know, they play, and the person who, uh, you know, I mean, let's say the, the person who only has one life left beats the other person once and then loses, that person's eliminated, and then the person who's still in for the other team has two lives. I hope that makes sense. Um, it, it definitely does overall. I just don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. And I think that's the best way they can go about it because that really shows which team has um, the best player, like has the overall best average, you know what I mean? Is, is the best team overall and not just have the singular best player because the way the team battle or run in MKQ is basically going to come down to who wins between each team's best player. You know what I mean? So it's like the best player on this team versus the best player on this team. And whoever wins that set is basically, it's not fully, it's not an exact science, but that's basically what it always comes down to. And it kind of uh, gets rid of the integrity of a team battle. And what's good about that style that I'm kind of criticizing is the fact that everyone gets to play. In the style that I explained, there's a chance that you're, the team that you're on, you just don't get to play because, you know, you have a player who's just constantly winning and eliminating other people. Because like, they stay on and if you wanted to you keep at it and it's like um you could just have the person who has like one life left go to the back of the line and they still keep that one life so the next time they go in they they only have one life left to lose it can be a little confusing to keep track of and that's generally not a great way to do it but if it's if that's the biggest thing is like, oh i want everyone to be able to play at least once you could run it like that um but that would be the best way to run crew battles is the way to determine who's a better clan because it's like you know what i mean like if it's Sonic Fox, in, in this traditional side, if it's Sonic Fox and four new, newborn babies versus, you know, um, a team like ELG, which is a, a very good team, um, Elite Legends Gaming, I think that's what it is. ELG is ran by uh, the Demon Lobby, um, aka OT. Um, but if it's, and the ELG is good, and they'll probably, they'll definitely, they're going to beat the four newborn babies, but Sonic Fox could just run through all five players. And maybe he go he loses a game, or they lose a game here, they lose a game there, they go three two with someone, but they're likely gonna be able to beat those five players, you know what I mean? And it's not gonna be like overall this team with Sonic Fox and four newborn babies is better than ELG. Uh overall as a team, it's the fact that Sonic Fox just had a ability to carry because he just kept getting fresh first threes. You know what I mean? So does that make sense? But yeah, that's where I'm going to uh, leave it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed a bit of a shorter episode again. Um, but you know, I'm just happy I've been able to stick true to the podcast, doing it every week. I'm going to be at Combo Breaker this weekend. I'm planning on uploading this. I have a uh, predictions video I'm doing with Joystick. And I'm really, really going to try over today, um, if I can. I still have work to, to get a video out of who who to look out for at tournaments because i've done that for most major tournaments and this is pro this is the biggest one in terms of prestige and stuff like that like you know ect was technically bigger in terms of numbers but it now we're eight months into the game that was like a month into the game so it was like people are more refined there really is no excuse it's not like the game just came out there's people who are going to qualify for final combat tournament there's people who are gonna not qualify for final combat so it's going to be really interesting to see. It's going to be a really cool event, so I really hope I can get that video out. I may not go so hard on the editing and just write the script and see what happens and then just put it over some gameplay. Um, but um, that's probably what I'm going to do. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate everyone who supports the podcast and supports me. If you haven't already, um, leave a uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. Um, it would help me reach a thousand subs, which means I can start monetizing the channel, which means I can start making money off YouTube, which would be great. I would very much appreciate that because um, I've been working hard on it. But uh, again, wish me luck this weekend, and I'll see you guys at the next video.